Well, hey guys, it's Tom. Uh, it's 9-11, and of course there are a lot of 9-11 videos on YouTube, and one of them uh, was from Give Me a Break Man, asking where were you on 9-11. Um, so on 9-11, let me tell you my story. On 9-11, I was leaving on a shopping trip with a group of um, designers from a client company and we were taking a corporate jet, a Gulfstream G4, leaving from Teterboro Airport in New Jersey on that morning. Our flight it was a beautiful morning, of course, as we all know. And our flight left Teterboro at 7 a.m. And when you fly out of Teterboro, which is a private, uh, what's called general aviation airport, meaning you know corporate planes and private planes fly out of there. When you fly out of Teterboro, you fly right over Manhattan. You fly over the lower Manhattan. And I remember flying over uh, Manhattan and seeing the World Trade Center, the Twin Towers, and um, you know, off we went on our way to Paris. Our first stop was to be Paris, and then um, Milan, and then London. About a ten-day trip. We um, we were about two hours out over the Atlantic when. The pilot, who we knew well, you know, he was a pilot who had been on the, this group of designers, traveled a lot, and this pilot had been our pilot before. <clears throat> and he came back and he said, a plane has crashed into the World Trade Center. And we were stunned, of course, and we thought, wow. A terrible accident, you know, a plane crashed into the World Trade Center. So we were, you know, disturbed that such a thing had happened, and but we went back to, you know, the kind of stuff. This is a very interesting, fun group of people, and you know, we went back to talking about, oh my God, you know, that happened, and oh, okay, well, we're gonna, this, we're doing this, we're doing that, and you know, or it was, it was an accident that it happened. And then, of course, a few minutes later, um, the pilot came back again and said that a second plane had hit the World Trade Center. And uh, God's honest truth here, the first thing that came to my mind was Osama bin Laden. I said, wow, Osama bin Laden did this. I had been reading about Osama bin Laden and Al-Qaeda ever since the... Um, well, for a long time. And um, so, so now here we were over the Atlantic, two and a half hours out of New York on our way to Paris. There was a satellite phone on the plane, but um, so everybody started, these are all New Yorkers, you know, we all live in the metro New York area. Um, so people started trying to call their homes and n nobody could get through. So I said, let me try. I'll try to call Karen, see if I can get a, get a hold of her. And so I called and because we live in Connecticut and not in the city, uh, apparently our phone lines worked where other people's didn't. So um, I got Karen and we proceeded to then relay information to Karen to relay to other people to make phone calls when and if she could to contact other people and to find out if everybody was okay, first of all. And just in general, <clears throat> you know, the most important thing at that moment was connecting with anybody. And so we were trying to connect with people. Now, I don't know when this happened, but it was probably about, a, maybe about an hour after we had found out about the attacks. 
pilot came back and said that he had been talking to corporate security and that we were not going to Paris. Paris was deemed to be too dangerous for us to go to and that we were going somewhere else but we didn't know where. So now we're flying and you know, everybody has a unique experience about 9-11 and mine was being in an airplane and not being able to see anything. We didn't see any images, we didn't, all we, had, all we knew was, well, that the towers had been hit and then later that they had collapsed. So we're still flying. Now it's getting late. It's getting to be evening and we still don't know where we're going. We know we're, we're continuing to head east. We're heading somewhere to Europe, but we don't know where. Finally, the captain comes back and says, well, um, they've told us that the safest place they can think of us to go and the best place for us to go is Amsterdam. And so that's what we did. We went to Amsterdam. They, this, was a, this is a big corporation and corporate travel had gotten us rooms at a hotel and there were other people from the same corporation on corporate jets. This was a, this time of year is a big travel time because of fashion shows and new lines being released in, in the stores in uh, Europe in particular. That, so there were a lot, there's always a lot of, of fashion people traveling around at this time of year. And so there were other, there were a couple of other jets full of people from the same corporation that also were redirected to Amsterdam. And that was on Tuesday. Now, of course, when we got to Amsterdam, when we got to the hotel, we had CNN. And so we finally got to see what it was that had happened. Of course, it, you know, like everyone, remember this is a design group our offices, the offices of this group that I was very closely, worked very, very closely with, were in down, we're in Lower Manhattan. We were on um, uh, 21st and Broadway. So, you know, we were a mile or and a half, two miles from ground zero. And a lot of people lived in the area and, and so we still were unable to get a hold of anybody and, um, you know, finally Karen got through to a few people and finally other people got through to their relatives and, um, you know, found out the extent of what had happened. And of course, CNN was on 24 seven and we were finding out everything we could about uh, the attacks. And um, so the next day in Amsterdam, uh, there was, a, um, a memorial, if you remember, maybe, I, I'm, I'm not sure if it was the next day or the day after. I, I have a feeling it was the day after, uh, like Thursday, that there was uh, a moment of silence throughout all of Europe for the victims of the attack. And I'll put some photographs that I took um, that day uh, in the the Palace Square, I'm sorry, I don't remember the exact name of it, in Amsterdam during that moment of silence, which was probably one of the most um, moving moments of my life. Uh, I went alone. None of my colleagues really wanted to go, uh, but I really had to go. So uh, I went alone and stood in this square and I had my camera just because I wanted to, of course, take pictures of, of this moment. And um, the people <laughs> made me for an American pretty quickly. And uh, it was, a, it was you know, a moment that, of course, I'll never forget. Uh, people coming up to me and hugging me and telling me how sorry they were. Uh, there were flowers everywhere throughout this, um, this square. And um, I was there for this moment of silence, which was profound and extraordinarily difficult and moving all at the same time. We didn't know how long we were gonna be in Amsterdam. As it turned out, if you recall, General Aviation, which is this private and corporate jet category of aviation, 
was the last category of aviation to be given permission to fly into U.S. airspace. And so by Saturday, this was, 9-11 was a Tuesday, right? So by Saturday, we still didn't know what was happening. And we learned finally that we were going to fly to Toronto, and then we were going to take a bus from Toronto over to um, uh, Buffalo. And then from Buffalo, we were going to get on a plane and fly to a White Plains airport, and then you know, we'd be home. So that's what we did, and I'll, and I'll end this video with a picture of all of us uh, getting off the plane in Toronto after having made this journey um, and finally on our way back home. So uh, again, like all of us, we all have unique 9-11 experiences and mine was in the air over the Atlantic um, on my way to Paris. So uh, take care, we'll see you soon.